Okay. <laughs> Kevy! <laughs> this is Kevin Boo Nap. He has given Mama kisses. Okay. Here's Jason. Jason is um, going to record his experience of when he died on December 11th, 2016. Jason, tell me the first thing you remember. The first thing I remember is you screaming at me um, when we were on our way to the hospital. And then <clears throat> right after you screaming at me, I started free falling out of my body and it was like, um, it was a, a long fall, but it's also, it was also fast. Like, I was in the plane, like in a jet. And when I got to the bottom, I was face to face with Satan. And I knew it was Satan. Because when you're dead, you know. You know who people are. You don't need to say who you are. Because you already, you automatically know. Describe what it looked like and felt like. I was face to face with Satan and it's a fear that I've never felt before. I was so, so terrified and I didn't want to look at him. His eyes were blood red and it was like um, his eyes were on fire. Because he, because of his hatred toward me. And he was really trying to get to me. But he, get, he couldn't get close to me. Because I was protected. And it made him even matter that he couldn't, he couldn't put his hands out to touch me and I could feel how angry he was because he couldn't torture me or touch me. But what did it look like? It was complete darkness. It's like, um, it's dark, it's more dark like when you turn the lights off in a in a bedroom and it's dark <laughs> Kevin, stop. and your eyes can focus well in hell it's the dark there you can't see your finger in front of your face and I was looking around and because of the fire from the lake of fire it was immediate it was uh, it was <clears throat> lighting up right around where I was and the demons they were all deformed and grotesque. Satan told me everything I did bad in my life and accused me a bunch of stuff. It was like, 
everything I did in my life just automatic automatically just it was like a um movie like a movie but it was really fast and I was looking around because I didn't want to look at Satan and I seen millions of people in the lake of fire and they were all screaming at me for me to help them and I couldn't help them they wanted me to help them because they knew I was being protected there were famous people there were pastors there were you know anybody under the sun was in the lake of fire and all of a sudden I was like I was snatched up and I was rising up so fast it was like the speed of light but it didn't scare you and I was in a brilliant light going really fast and all of a sudden I was I was in like a meadow and had millions of flowers and the flowers were alive they they were singing praises to Jesus everything in heaven is alive and everything is praising it the colors on the flowers it's colors that you've never seen on earth you think that you've seen every color but you haven't it's colors that you've never seen before And then it was instantly I was face to face with Jesus in that meadow. He had light blue eyes. And I knew it was Jesus. Because like I said, you know who you're face to face with. And he showed me the nail marks in his hands. And told me that he did that for me and everybody else on this earth. I love my wife and I love my two daughters, but the love of Jesus it doesn't even come close. It doesn't even come close. You felt it in your spirit there's no pain in heaven I felt great no thoughts of earth no thoughts of my wife and my kids 
I just wanted to stay. And he knew that I wanted to stay. But he said, you got to go back. <laughs> Tears me up. Because I, the love that I felt, the love that I felt, and I knew where I was coming back to. I was coming back to an earth. That people judge others because how they look, because they've got tattoos, or they're drunk, or they're on drugs. There's no I didn't want to leave that and come back to an earth that people are fighting and killing each other and and what really bothers me is I've been in churches before where people have come in that have tattoos that look different and you can see immediately that they're looked down upon. I've got news for those people in those churches. He died not just for you. He died for those people on those streets, those people in the world. And it is our job as Christians to love on people and share the gospel with no judgment. He doesn't want anybody to perish in the lake of fire. Because if you heard those people screaming at me for me to help them, you would have more compassion. There's a lot of churches that is the problem. They turn people away because they look different. They don't want to be bothered. There were pastors in the lake of fire because they preach on Sundays and Wednesdays and they live their life any way they want to for the rest of the week. Those people in the Bible that came up to Jesus and said, we cast out demons in your name. And he said, leave me. I never knew you. The main thing is a relationship with Jesus Christ. You want to see revival in America? And we got churches like that that turn people away because the way they look, because the way they smell. Or dress. Or dress. <laughs> Who are you, the judge? Are you the judge? Jesus is the judge. It's our job to love on people, to share the gospel I always hear people, I want revival to break out. Until we stop doing our thing, 
the way we think. Stinking thinking. Stinking thinking. Until we change the way we think of those people in the world. We're not special because we go to church. We should be out in the world sharing the gospel and not picking and choosing who to share the gospel with. I wish everybody can feel what I felt, the evil and also the love. He died for everyone. If you don't agree with their lifestyle, it doesn't matter. It's our job to love on them, to share the gospel, and leave it up to Jesus to change their hearts. Yes. Leave it up to Jesus to change their hearts. It's like we have, it's like our church in America is like in Jesus' time. Those Pharisees, he rebuked those Pharisees. They walked on the other side of the uh, road to get away from the homeless people, the hurting. That's not the way it's supposed to be. And he told me to tell you to rebuke that thinking. He's not happy. He's not happy the way the church is going. We're so we walk into these churches and they want the best of everything in these churches. And that's good. But we forget what our mission is. We're spending millions of dollars, dollars to build these buildings. When all that money could be used to help people. Yes. We are the church. It's not a building. We are the church. And if you sit down with somebody, bikers, people with tattoos, homosexuals, everybody under the sun, if you ask them, one of the reasons why they don't go to church is because of the judgment that they are brought. Whether you say something about their lifestyle or not, they can feel it. <laughs> they can feel it. They won't walk into churches because of the judgment. Let's get them in the church. No, get the church into them. Yes, let's get the church into them. And take the church to them. And take the church to them, yeah, absolutely. We've got it all wrong. We've got it all wrong. We need to stop looking at people's color, their skin.
just stop looking at everything a person does and is and realize that they're all human beings and they're all who Christ died for. Doesn't matter what your color is, what your race is, if you're gay, straight, whatever. You're If you're a human being, then that's who Jesus died for. It's our job to love on them. Yeah. To share the gospel and to love on people. That's the main thing that I learned when I was face to face with Jesus. The love that he had for me. He has that love for everybody else on this earth. And just because we go to church, we need to stop thinking you are something special. Because those people out in the world, they're just as special too. And you don't want anybody, you don't want that on your conscience. When you're face to face with Jesus and you're judged, if you turned your, turned away from somebody, if Jesus put it on your heart, <laughs> yeah, you better share that gospel you better go and love on those people you don't even need to start sharing the gospel you just need to see what's going on in their life how they're doing don't force it down their throat just love on them and if you have the opportunity to help people then help them yes. don't just say oh I'll pray for you that's, yes. I, I don't like when people do that. But that's pretty much all I want to say is love on people. Stop judging people the way how they look. He's not happy with the church right now. And we need to stop that thinking. Thank you. Amen.